Hello and welcome back to the Boat Shed. My name is John and this boat behind me is Antidote. I'm an engineer and a sailor with the dream of fixing up this old boat to go sailing around the world. Now I've got a lot of work to do first and last week I was removing this old bulkhead from the bow of the boat. Now I knew that it had some problems with some delamination but as we began to take it out it became obvious that the problem was way worse than I originally thought. It's not supposed to do that. Stick around in today's video while we continue fabricating and installing a new bulkhead up at the bow of the boat. Last time, after removing that old rotten bulkhead, we started fabricating this piece here, which is the new forward bulkhead. This is one of four sections of half inch marine plywood that will make up that full bulkhead. So when it's all said and done, we'll have a one inch thick plywood bulkhead that'll be laminated in glass. If you're interested to know more about how I plan to replace this bulkhead, you should really check out the last video. We'll link that up here somewhere and you can get caught up to speed. So let me catch you up on what we've been doing here. I want all of this to be super watertight. So that's one of the reasons why I'm using this through hole fitting instead of just drilling a hole in the bulkhead. Since fiberglass doesn't like to make hard bends, we rounded over this edge with a router bit and then installed a thickened epoxy fillet on this edge to allow the glass to wrap nicely. So I put one layer of four ounce cloth over this whole piece with epoxy, let that cure up and that was done overnight. I cut the edges, machined it all out nicely. Over on this side, same idea, but the glass is installed before the through hole fitting. And that's just to make sure that everything is super sealed up. The people that make these four spar Marlon fittings ensure me that the Marlon is designed to bond to fiberglass, unlike a lot of plastics. So it holds the fiberglass in. We'll put another layer over top of all of this to get this super well sealed. And then when this goes back into the forward end of the boat, we'll install it all with a lot of thickened epoxy and we'll actually tab it in so there's nowhere for that water to go except out this hole. After last week's video, there was a couple of really good questions that I want to address. Okay, so you have all the water coming out of this fitting. Now where is it going to go? Into the bilge? No. It's a great question. That's the original design of this boat. It actually just had an undercut bulkhead so the water could run underneath the bulkhead and it would run all the way down the center line of the boat under the stainless steel water tanks back to the bilge pumped out by the regular bilge pump. So that's not at all what I want to do. That can be a smelly situation. Also, there's just a lot of water in the boat. The anchor goes up and down a lot. I plan on using the anchor all the time. So I plan on connecting a hose to this. Now these through hole fittings are straight threads. They're not tapered threads. This here is actually a specialty fitting. It's a inch and a quarter straight threaded end and then an inch and a quarter hose barb. You can also get this in a half inch hose barb, which I probably should have bought, but we'll get to that later. So this will thread on here. The nice thing about this is that it actually engages the threads properly, whereas a tapered fitting, an NPT, which is what you'll find more commonly here, will only engage maybe two or three threads and it's not gonna be as strong. Now, the problem with this is that it doesn't have any natural means of sealing itself. So when I install this, I'll have to use some sort of sealant to get this all watertight, but it is under low pressure, so I'm not too worried about it. So now with this hose attached, I'll be able to drain this wherever I like. I could drain that hose to the bilge, but what I actually plan on doing is running this down to some location where I'll be able to somewhat conveniently access and I'll install a shower sump. So from there, I'll be able to maintain the pump and then pump this water out of the boat, slightly above the water line somewhere through a high loop, maybe some sort of a high water alarm somewhere so I will know if that system is backing up. If my anchor locker is starting to flood with water, I'll know and I can maintain that pump and get it all evacuated. Maybe I'll have a, a safety switch somewhere or valve that I can open up to drain this out into the bilge should that become necessary if the pump absolutely fails. It's always good to have backup systems. That solution I like a lot better and I'll probably use one of those bilge pumps that is more tolerant to debris and foreign objects than a regular centrifugal bilge pump. Stand by for more details on that as they develop. But yeah, I do not want to have water in the bilge. Thank you for pointing that out. Anyone that added a comment like that, there were several of you. Another comment that we saw a lot was that people pointed out that there was gonna be quite a bit of water standing at the bottom of the anchor locker. It looks like a little over two inches here. What I failed to show you in my rendering was that I actually planned to have it filled in solid below that first fiberglass floor that goes towards the drain. So there should be no problem with standing water. I'm actually working on that right now. Let's go show you what I mean. The first thing that I wanna do here 
is make a nice floor that's sloped towards the drain at the exact right level. Now I wanted to end in a really thick piece of fiberglass, but below that I need some support. So we're gonna cut out some foam in little concentric pieces that get gradually smaller and form to the shape of the bottom of the hull. This way I can easily make each piece as I work my way towards the bow. Once I have all these pieces put together, I can glue them up and we can shape that into a final wedge that will form nicely to the bottom of the bow and create a great platform to lay up some new fiberglass to build this wedged, angled floor piece. That's what we're working on right now. Here we have the foam block that I installed at the bow of the boat yesterday, or that I glued up, I didn't really install it. And you'll see it's wrapped in peel ply. I did that so that when I removed this, the service would be ready to go back into the boat. And I used packing tape along the hull to protect it and get the shape, but allow it to release. So you'll see here there's some really glossy areas that came through where the epoxy came through, pooled up on the peel ply. And so those are the areas where it was in contact directly with the tape. So this way I was able to remove it. It just popped out relatively easily. And then also the wedge shape probably helped with that. And now we can take this peel ply off see how it looks, dress it up to the right surface, and then start getting ready to go back in the boat permanently. I'm pleased with the fit of this wedge up at the bow of the boat. It looks pretty good. And you'll notice that the lower edge is quite a bit below the skin fitting, the through hull fitting. And that's because we're gonna add several layers of glass to this to bring those two to the same plane. So before I do that, I wanna install some wedges onto this to give it the shape that I want so that all the water is directed towards the center of the wedge and then down out of the through hole. That foam wedge at the bow of the boat fits really well. So now we want to lay up some glass so we have a nice thick strong floor that has the exact same angle. So this piece here is the exact same angle as that wedge and this is a larger piece that's going to allow me to lay some fiberglass up. It's covered in my favorite release film which is just packing tape. You see I've got the profile on it here. So this is going to go into a vacuum bag with a bunch of layers of 1708 and we're going to cook that up for a while until we get a nice thick laminate and we'll see how we did and we'll build it up until we're at the right thickness.
the bulkhead temporarily installed right now. One brace down below, two clamps at the corners. You'll notice I have the double thickness for where the through hole fitting mounts, and then above that is going to be the two vertical sections of the bulkhead. Now what I neglected to think about was that there is a shelf that goes in here, and the cross member on the next bulkhead is right there. And so there's going to be a matching one over here. By the time I get the second bulkhead in and I'm able to screw it in from the other side or through bolt it, I'm going to have just that little tiny access hole. It's going to be very difficult to get down into this area to bolt anything up. I want to double up the bulkhead on this side as well, up to where the platform will go. That's something I didn't think about before, but it's not too late to add it now. I have here my trusty level laser, so we'll shoot a line around the perimeter here to pick up where the brace will mount on the bulkhead and I'll finish grafting in the extra little piece. I just need to remember that that line is two and one eighth of an inch above the bottom of the brace. In preparation for this new piece that's gonna fill in the double thickness where the shelf is, what I wanna do is make sure that I cut the plywood out correctly because I showed you last time how I had planned to arrange all these pieces and cut them out. And what that does is, is it takes advantage of the two directions of the plywood. So we have on the horizontal cut pieces, we have all the grain, the, the primary grain running this way, and then on the other piece running the other way. Plywood tends to have a different stiffness in each direction. So I wanna have it laid up that way specifically. So before I cut this piece out, I wanna make sure I can get it in that orientation and also not mess up another cut I have planned and then ruin a whole piece. So let's lay it out, make sure it's gonna fit before we go any further. Last night we added another layer of plywood to this lower bulkhead up to the point, slightly above the point, where the cross brace will be. I've got a whole whack of screws in here. We can take all these out now, sand this down, make sure it's nice and flat, pull this off, see how it looks, dress up the edges, and then test the fit. So we've marked off the spot where we want this new cross member to go, while well, it's an old cross member. Now it might be hard to see in the camera, but this back edge is actually shaped kind of oddly. I don't know if they were trying to fit it in specifically, but since we have a one inch thick bulkhead here, plus we're gonna add on this side at least one layer of 1708, which is another 44 thousandths, we are going to bring this out, and that means I'm gonna have to actually have to cut off at least a quarter of an inch off the back of this. So let's do that now. It'll help it sit a little more flat and then we'll locate it on the bulkhead here, make sure it fits, test it out, and then I'm gonna actually through bolt it. We'll epoxy plug those in the plywood just so that this thing on the anchor side at least is totally waterproof.
Now that we have this beam located on the bulkhead, I'm going to drill through all these holes through the bulkhead so I have a matching hole set and then I can go through again and drill through one more time into the bulkhead with a larger drill bit. We can fill it with an epoxy plug. Then we're sure that there's no water intrusion possibility there ever. So my plan is to just over drill and plug two of these holes to start with. We'll leave the outer side ones until after so that we have something to locate the bar with again to re-drill through to make sure that we get our epoxy plugs centered just right. So we'll use two different drill bits to progressively drill up the sides here. Anytime that I'm filling up these holes with epoxy plugs, I like to do this in two stages. So I always start with an unthickened epoxy using a syringe and I let that sit in each hole for several minutes to soak into the substrate and really get a good bond established. Then I pull as much of the epoxy out as I can with the syringe, mix all that up with some 406 colloidal silica and you're aiming for sort of a heavier syrup. Then I put it back into each of the holes and then let that cure overnight. Now I always try to leave these a little bit proud because the epoxy will continue to soak into the substrate before it gels and it's easier to file off the tops later than it is to try to come back and mix up more and add more. It just takes a lot more time. The epoxy here has had a chance to dry overnight, so we've been able to fill all these holes. I went ahead and did all the other ones from the screws just because I had mixed up epoxy to plug these two holes for mounting the cross brace, and I just I had it open and I thought, oh, let's just fill the rest of them up. It's a bit overkill. I could just smear in heavy epoxy when I go to coat this piece later when it's in the boat, but I had it ready, so anyway, we did that. We're gonna knock down the high spots now, and I'm gonna use this flat file for that. This one has a double cut, and that's just because it's easy to keep things more flat that way. Get out the sander here, and the hard spot epoxies will knock down slower than the wood around it. You'll tend to kind of get wavy finish, so we're gonna use the file. So I really love setting things up to drill out this way because you get a really good through bolt. So by using the drill press to drill out the four holes and then mounting the two smaller ones on the outside, and now we've got the epoxy plugs on these two holes, we have a really good drill jig here built in. So we'll run the drill bit through this. This is an inch and a half thick, so it is a really good guide. And we'll go all the way through the part and hopefully we'll get the hole centered nicely in the epoxy plug, and then we'll be able to bolt through these two to hold it and prepare the other sides. All right, so we'll save plugging these holes until the next time I have some epoxy mixed up. Let's take a look now at the part we were vacuum bagging yesterday, see how that turned out. So this piece was on about 25 inches of vacuum for a little over eight hours, almost, almost 10 hours. So let's crack it out of here and see how it turned out. It feels really solid. top level of peel ply, which we want to take off. The bottom level we'll leave on. Right, this was five layers of glass, and I used a few different directions, but Ultimately, it's just five layers of 1708, and I'm getting a thickness of 170 thousandths of an inch. When I measure one layer of glass, I get around 32 thousandths of an inch. We are going to need another 10 plus layers of 1708 on this part at the current schedule to get to the thickness that I need. Now, I'm not sure if I want to do that all at once. You do need to be concerned about the part getting too hot and exotherm being created when you get into really thick layups. Six didn't seem to be any problem at all. In fact, I applied a bit of heat with my gun to try to kind of encourage it to cure faster. It didn't seem to have any problem with an exotherm. I'm interested to hear from you if you have experience with how many layers you can get away with before you start to get into those dangerous temperatures. I did have an opportunity last night to add more glass to this in preparation for today, but I decided against it. The reason for that being we had a huge storm come through last night. 
60 plus mile an hour winds and it's sort of the early fall here so it's the first big windstorm and all of those trees that are getting ready to come down well they start to topple and so we actually ended up losing power last night at around 8 p.m. Now if I'd have had the vacuum laid up that would have of course killed the vacuum and then it would have just been a regular wet layup. Probably would have been fine but it had me thinking if I was doing a deck or something like that a really important part that is essentially irreplaceable then what would I do if the power were to go out? So I had this idea. Something showed up just the other day that might be able to help me with that. And that's this big blue box right here. So this is Victron's Quattro 120 AC 24 volt DC inverter charger. And this is capable of generating a lot of standby power off of a 24 volt DC power source, which I happen to have standing by. So my thought is that I could use this as my backup power to generate a few hours in those transition periods if the power were to go out. Now another reason why I definitely want to try this out is I don't plan on actually installing this in the boat for some time, but I bought it off of eBay, so I need to make sure that it works. Now the reason I got it off of eBay is that I'm always looking for deals out there and scrounging for good pickups when I can, and I've found all kinds of great things over the years for this refit project, and this is one of them. So I got this for about 25-30% of the retail cost. For me, that is a great deal. I have a limited budget for this refit, and so it's important for me to pick up deals like this when I can. Now, if you're watching and you're doing a refit and you have an unlimited budget, I totally appreciate that. And I'd also love to tell you about the Patreon group that we have here at the channel. So for a few bucks a month, you get access to some behind the scenes content. Sometimes we have early releases. I send you some stickers, handwritten note. And um, I've just loved chatting with a lot of my Patreons. We bounce ideas back and forth on refits. So. If you're interested in joining the Patreon group, it would be awesome to have you, and there's a link in the description below. Anyway, back to the story. I do plan on getting this thing set up in a future video. We'll try it out, test it out, and maybe even show how it could work as a backup power source. Back to the show here. Right, the epoxy is now dry and so all four of these holes have been filled and overboard so that we can drill through with the appropriate size for the bolt and we have an epoxy plug completely sealing the wood from any water intrusion now or ever. Let's finish this off, get this mounted, and we can take it for a test drive. Getting back to this fiberglass piece, we have 15 layers on here now. It's almost 500,000, so half an inch thick is exactly where we want it. So I think what we can do now is start to rough cut it out to the proper shape, matching it roughly to this foam piece, although it will have to change a little bit because the inside of the boat is somewhat irregular. But let's get it close, take it up and see how it all fits. Things up at the bow are fitting really nicely. Really pleased to see that. I'm gonna use this basically to hold those two parts in place as the epoxy cures. We'll push all this up in place right where I want it to be in its final position. And we'll have all those parts gluing down. Now I don't want this to get stuck in there. So we're gonna treat some a release film, which is uh, AKA packing tape here. And I will also just probably put a layer of peel ply over this face. 
because that's what those other parts are going to mate to. So any epoxy that gets on here will, when it releases, have the peel ply to pull back. Good surface for bonding to when I go to put this back in. The new parts for the anchor locker look great and they fit excellent. So what do you say we head on up to the bow and glue those parts in permanently? Well, we're gonna leave things there for today. I hope that you've enjoyed this video, and if you have, it would mean so much to me if you'd hit that good old like button. It does really help with the elusive YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much. Now, come back next time, where we're gonna be continuing fabricating and installing parts up at the bow as we continue to replace this old rotten bulkhead. Now, I'm considering upgrading it to a crash watertight bulkhead, and if you have any thoughts or ideas on that, I would love to hear them in the comment section down below. We're gonna discuss all of that a bit more next week and what would be involved in an upgrade like that. I'd like to give a big thanks to the folks over on Patreon that really do help make this project a possibility. An extra, extra big thanks to the folks whose names are appearing on the screen that go the extra mile to make sure that this Living For Sale channel stays in production. So thank you all very much. If you'd like to join the Patreon community, that would be so awesome. There's a link in the description down below. For a few bucks a month, we have some things like updates from behind the scenes. We do some early releases, ad-free videos, and I'll send you a couple stickers like the one right there. Now, if you're new to this channel and by some miracle you are still watching, I am very, very impressed. And there's a playlist for you that will help you get caught up from the very beginning, and it's right here. And if you'd like to just know more about this bulkhead replacement we're doing, well, then that playlist will start right here. Now, if you'd like to subscribe for more of this content, I would love that. There's a link right here. See y'all next time. For some reason the YouTube gurus say not to say thanks for watching, but I don't know why. I am thankful that you watched.